I like it. Oh, it's doing like a... One of oh, those. that looks trippy too when you did that. Alright, welcome to another episode of Revolt Garage. Uh, I'm Matt. And Will. Will. What you got here? Uh, we got... We have a uh, divorce motor set up for the Revolt motor. This has a nice new end plate on it that will allow you to mount the inverter separate from the motor. Why do you want to do that? Uh, in case you have something that is not using the longitudinal drive shaft on the center of the car, you can mount this in between the wheels along with the motor underneath it, keep your low center of gravity. Kind of like what we did in this thing right here. Oh yeah! Go check this out. <laughs> so last time you guys saw this, uh, this car, I think everything was taken out of it. There's been a few more things taken out of it, but also some things put back into it with the new EV setup. And what we have here is what's the partner of this, and that is the motor and all of the, the step-down gears. The mass of the motor is nice, low, and behind the line of the wheels right here, and then you have your half shafts going to your step-down ratio right here. So you use the stock differential, you keep all of that robustness yeah. in there. Yep. Yeah, so uh, this is actually a really, really nice setup. We had our guy Johnny Five, come in here and fabricate some mounts. We have a few new cross members in here to handle a lot of the uh, the weight as well as the torque and everything that's gonna yeah. be put to this 1936 to... chassis, something pretty old. Yeah, so, he got this in there without really, he didn't have to cut the frame, he didn't have to cut any of the body works. So that was one of the big goals with this car is to keep everything reversible. So that's good job, Johnny Five. It's pretty tight, <laughs> it's pretty That's not even a fingernail in between there, that's awesome. <laughs> but no, so, he got it. Yeah. So the inverter is going to be above that. So when you open the hood, yes. there's going to be this kind of jewel sitting there. Yep. Right. Yep. You're the going to see it through those horizontal fin, you know, grills right there. You're <laughs> going to see, you're going to see some big old two watt cables right here, along with the awesome high voltage uh, warning and the revolt logo. So it sounds like it's filling up the engine bay area pretty good. So yeah. Well, the so going to go. We have the motor, but yeah, we all we have what we call the tombstone <laughs> that's going to go uh, behind it, kind of right up against the firewall, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Matt pointed that out. So <laughs> this made a lot of things possible as far as, as far as using a little bit more of the engine base space. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be front wheel drive, so our rear, we're able to throw some batteries in the rear. Without having to fit a drive shaft on the center or fitting a drive unit in between the rear wheels, we were able to dedicate that space more towards the heavy batteries um, to keep that center of gravity low as well. So that's where all of this comes in. Now this is kind of figured out. We spent some time on Fusion 360. Um, determined that we were going to be good to go with a 14 module setup for and that's from a 75 pack yep yep um, so part of the three swap or triple swap of a battery pack go from one tesla to the next um, pulling a pack out of the mix to, in order to do a vw bus that i'm converting um, this is i think the final destination of that 75 kilowatt hour pack yeah 14 modules and we have them laid out in this kind of skateboard arrangement similar to what you find when you tear apart those uh, modules, you know, taking them out of the Model S or X. Um, but much like the Revolt motor, these are actually turned 90 degrees as well. And instead of the batteries, you know, outboarding to the coolant to the sides of the cars, they're actually front and rear. So following the Revolt motor, just turning things sideways and making them work, right? Um, we're using a combination of 3 16ths, 3 8 and quarter inch aluminum in order to kind of uh, have a, a nice structural skateboard under here. This is a six module skate. Uh, and this will power if you have like 144 volt, yeah, like high high voltage, voltage. Or yeah, hyper yeah, yeah. or something. Um, and this would actually fit in the bed of, of a Toyota Wolf, pickup. Like a rabbit or a Toyota pickup yeah, or something. Toyota yeah, that'd be, that'd be that would go right actually, between yeah. the wheel wells. Yeah, so yeah. build a subfloor over this and you got your battery pack. Um, we have all kinds of provisions for the coolant lines. We have provisions for our cell taps, our thermistors and our bus um, of the high voltage going and some bulkhead connections for all of those things. That's kind of like yeah. everything from this unplugged, you just drop the battery right yes. out, pull the lid off. Exactly. If you had to service it, there's no messing around. Yeah. Now speaking of, of dropping this out, we have some awesome oy, heavy duty, that looks fairly three heavy gates, duty. steel brackets. <laughs> so we have, uh, we had our, our guy Johnny Five kind of mock up and design with Eddie. These are gonna be welded into the frame. Mm. And so they are going to be holding it on the side. And we, we have, we have a, a 90 degree kickoff to weld to this, and then we're going to M8 fasten the battery skateboard against these rails. So we're not cutting so the floor of the car. Dude, we're not cutting up the floor at yeah. all. There's actually some nice cavities that are going to be above this that we're going to be able to run some of our 2 watts, some of our hoses, and a lot of the stuff. Um, 
to really make sure that this is the underside of this is probably all you're going to really see for the most part when you get this thing up on the plate. Yeah, we kind of mocked up that battery box in in cardboard under the car. You guys actually they actually used CAD the cardboard, cardboard aided aided design. design. Yeah, <laughs> and so. really. There's very little, you can stand six feet back from the car, you can pretty much not see the battery box. Nice. All right, let's, I didn't get to take part in this, so now, nah, now nah, I'm gonna get, gonna get to you. You, you guys just had to it. tell me to, to, to make it work. You tell me where it goes. All right. Well, I wasn't part of it. Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we are almost to this, uh, what is this called? Axle, well, axle. Yeah, axle. <laughs> yeah, it's a single axle, not a CV split axle. So. We're almost to that. This is about where most of the weight is going to be, closer and towards the back. Kicks up here, hey? Yeah, those those side rails are picking up from here, and they're actually welding to a couple of nice strong corners that we have, and uh, it's going to hold this, you know, the, the six module skateboard underneath the car. So easy dropping the bottom of the car very little. I mean, those are all only like three point one inches tall. That's about all we're adding. Yeah, the skid plate with a thick skid plate underneath. It looks dramatic from down here, but. <laughs> Bear in mind, this is where the original 12 volt was, and oh, it yeah. hung down to about here. It was, yeah. it was so like a not, four foot or a four inch ledge. We're really not losing there. any ground clearance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This thing rides pretty high as it is. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah, we're good. So that's where the skateboard's going to go. As I mentioned before, we have the tombstone. So we have about 15 inches from this cross member to the firewall, and the, we're going to have a four module stack that will be able to go up from the bottom. We're going to fasten it to the firewall and against these cross members. And that's what's standing up right there. And it's going to house and hold quite a few things. Um, we call it the tombstone because it kind of looks like it when it's standing upright. And it's going to serve as a mounting plate for our high voltage junction box. Boom, right there. So a lot of the controls and switching is going to be accessible for troubleshooting or just installing in general. I think it's going to look just Great. It's like right there on yep. display, like right. with the cables coming right out neat on the side. I dig Did it. not go wrong with that boat. I dig it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to match, you know, yep. that's going to be up front and center, so is this. So it's yep. just kind of a... And then a the charger and a couple of BMSs are on there as well, I think, right? We do have. We have a BMS master and a cell tap because uh, we have 18 modules per BMS satellite. And we have 24 in this box, so we got two We're modules two. there. Get to be symmetrical at least. Yep. Yep. And then our CCU is going to be right there. Um, and then we have another four batteries to mount. Now these are going to be able to go uh, just underneath the trunk. At first we thought yeah. with a 16 module setup we were going to have to intrude into the trunk and take away three inches from the floor of the trunk. Um, 14 modules being more than enough for this kind of cruiser front wheel drive. Yeah, you know, yeah. This Plant. shouldn't really be going down the strip, especially with them drum brakes. Now I know you disagree. Drum brakes are are, <laughs> are good in your books, but um, yeah, this is going to be just four modules underneath the trunk. The trunk space remains the same. Yeah. We may end up upgrading the the stereo system. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't get to hear it whether it's something good enough. It but. had a whole trunk full of stereo yeah. equipment, so I think it's gonna it's gonna get another trunk full of stereo. Equipment. <laughs> All right. Well, at least the trunk is going to some good use. <laughs> um, yeah. So that is the last four of our modules, and again, we have the bulkhead connections. We have uh, layered stop and mounting plates for the modules. These are actually uh, doubling for lifting the modules off of the aluminum surface and then also having a gap in between the two and locking them down from the top. So we have all kinds of, we're not going to have any chafing, no isolation issues. We're going to fit the mica boards that we take out of the modules from the stock. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> so, cool. Yeah, that's kind of, that's the, the difficulty with mounting these modules, huh? Is that you can't, the only places you can grab them is these side rails in here. Yeah. So you got to build your box yeah, kind of to account for that. You got coolant ribbons here. You got circuit boards in the front. You got terminals that are on plastic platforms that yeah. if you over torque them, you take them out of there and then you can't tighten them down. Like they're fragile as, as awesome as they are and internally cooled as they are. This is the only structural thing you can mount them with. And this is like my third iteration of trying to mount these things that they're not going to move laterally up and down like anything. I think this is actually a pretty good formula. Well, I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's a good so, one. Yeah. Well, I've been working on the whole time is, is making the thing run. So I got the uh, <laughs> the short end of the stick, I guess, doing the uh, the low voltage wiring. So we build all the low voltage wiring out of the car in one go. We can test it out of the car. You know, if something's going to change, it's so much easier. Um, Wait, don't I? Don't we already have a harness that comes with the three volt motor when you order one? <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> It's not good enough for you? Come on, man. I put this, those things together. This is Will from Buckwide. He builds the harnesses for us. 
so we do ship our motors with a, with a plug and play harness and the whole point of that harness is to be universal. You know, whatever car you've got, it works. Um, with this build, the fact that we're integrating all the AEM stuff and the fact that it's all at the front of the car, there's nothing at the back of the car for us, it just made sense to build one harness, not build an AEM harness and a T2C harness. You know, we're already there, we're already doing the work, we just build one integrated harness. Um, but yes, we do have uh, plug and play harnesses for the motors, which would work for this also. It's damage control. Did you guys see that? That's yeah. all damage control. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm seeing a lot more twisted pairs in this one. So the AEM yep. system uses a lot more can lines. We've got than... three can channels on the on the VCU 275. Yeah, three just, can just channels. Just the AEM side of the Then the ice spy, then the T2C can. Yeah, so it's, it's a fairly in-depth. This will probably double or triple in size before I'm done, but it's getting but there. This is great. I mean, it, it really is good. You'll be able to loosely zip tie these things together. Yeah. Be able to put them through firewalls and run them and just know that you got your lengths well. And this you is so the way to do it, yeah. If this is the first time I've done one like this, just laid out where the components are in the car, measure the distance from each one to each one, figure out where you're gonna run the wires, and then you just have dimensions. And then you need to run a wire from here to here, you know exactly how long it's gotta be, you cut the wire, you put it in harness. So this is this is the way to do it. So, uh, shoot, what is we, next? I mean, everything is kind of figured out. Um, you, you're catching us, this video is catching us in the middle of, you know, welding together all of these battery boxes. They're stitched together. All the battery modules fit well. We have all the bulkheads and coolant figured out. You got the wiring figured out. I think we have gauges to figure out because yeah. a lot of the analog stuff, fuel, oil pressure, That's don't fun. care. About you get to be a bit creative with that. Yeah. So we have a, a nice little bezel to work with up there. We're going to call our buddies over at, uh, at Speed Hut and uh, get the gauges figured out as far as the color scheme. We actually want to use too because yeah. we can run, you can have an amp gauge, which would work kind of like a power gauge. You know, the more power you use in the amp, yeah. the needle comes up. That's kind of fun. But do you need it in a cruiser? Maybe not. Yeah. So you get to have a bit of fun. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. So, so you got temps, state of charges, amperage pulls. I mean, there's a few more circles, empty circles up there if we don't monitor things like amperage and, and RPMs yeah. and things like that. So I'd like to recreate well. something. Yeah, recreate something that looks like the original dash. Yeah. 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 So I think that's probably about it, right? I'd say so. This I mean, is this is my week. It's a bunch that's of progress. Weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's a bunch of progress. Um, this is really cool to see in here. It's mm -hmm. really cool to see all that coming together. Um, I think this is going to be one of the... Uh, one of the more classy builds when it's done. Oh yeah, yeah. this is this is going to be. I, I think this is the build. This is my favorite build we've done so far. Yeah, Ooh, that's saying it quite a bit. <laughs> he's got an e-bike that he broke a uh, land speed record on, and he's saying this thing tops it, huh? <laughs> <Not really. laughs> well, for the cars at least. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> Clarification. Uh, that about covers it, right? Sure does. This is a good checkpoint. A lot of progress made. A lot of progress to make. So we're it's gonna keep going. Together. Yeah, we're gonna keep going. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, Revolt Systems on YouTube as well as Instagram. There's also uh, a few videos that we have on this awesome triple swap battery pack. There's quite a journey <laughs> of multiple battery packs, uh, including this one. So yeah, check it out, guys. We'll see you next time.